Hello, I'm Dr. Rosemary Francis, Chief Scientist here at Altair, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to get started with HPC in the cloud and what to look for to make sure that you make that as successful as possible first time round. So setting up your cloud account, what do you need to do on day one? Um, start with a company credit card, it's as simple as that. The next thing you need to do is configure different types of users. So you've got admin users um, and general users. You need to set up the account spending limits and warning thresholds. There are some basic controls available with most cloud vendors, but most HPC customers want something a bit more sophisticated, like, like one of our budget solutions. You need to understand the velocity of spend as well as the budget limits, because you don't want to find out um, after the job is completed that you were way over budget, you want that to be something that is um, very tightly controlled as well. Um, and before you can deploy anything, you do need to set up secure networking and set up a VPN so that you can burst into the cloud securely. So the next part is about setting up the policies or controls. Now, a policy is really no different from a, a question you ask of the workload. So um, something simple such as does the user or team have budget? Um, is this job cloud enabled? So has it been containerized? Has it been benchmarked in the cloud? Um, what, what instances should we spin up to run this particular workload? Um, you can also configure your infrastructure so that if there is spare capacity on premises, you can, you can use that spare capacity without spinning up additional resources in the cloud. You can also control regions. So do you want this to run local to your center or local to another team? And also how many of these jobs can run in parallel? That's more about the, the velocity of spend and, and controlling um, the, the rate at which you can spin up resources. So all of these things are set up so that you can configure them at the click of a button with our cloud bursting products. So if you're interested in setting up some of these controls, come and talk to us. So next, let's look at what workloads run in the cloud. Now, you may want to run workloads in the cloud because you require high capacity or because you require a specific capability. For example, Monte Carlo studies are often very large arrays of short jobs. It's often important as well to get the result within a certain period of time. So it's no good having that large array of jobs trundling away in the corner of the data center because by the time you get the result back, it's, it's no longer useful. So that would be an example of a workload where it'd be cost effective to burst into the cloud to ensure that you are getting the results in, within the time frame that you need. You also may want to run in the cloud if you've got very short term needs of specific capacity, uh, sorry, specific capabilities such as GPGPUs or low latency InfiniBand. Um, you also may want to burst into, into the cloud if you've got medical workloads with specific data restrictions and you might want to spin up a separate compute cluster that's completely isolated from your on-premises resources. Thank you for listening.